I caught a lot of little fish. Uh, you know, I think I probably had four or five decent fish to hit. Never did really actually boat one of them. We uh, we caught quite a few small fish. Uh, we established uh, two small fish patterns that uh, if the wind will let us fish them, I think we can catch a few fish tomorrow. I caught several little fish. I didn't uh, didn't get any big ones. It's going to be. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I think I can weigh 20 20 pounds plus. I think it's probably got some fish in it. It's got a lot of bait in it. Uh, it's got some beautiful cover. I know that. We didn't make a dent in it today. Uh, you're just going to have to hunt a whole lot harder. It's This is beautiful Lake Texoma, spanning the borders of Texas to the north and Oklahoma to the south. It's a massive impoundment, nearly 90,000 surface acres in all, and it's the site of the 1979 Bass Masters Classic. The best bass fishermen in the world are about to challenge Lake Texoma for the $25,000 first place honors. The practice rounds gave these anglers a good idea of what they're up against. And if the experts are right, this body of water will yield a record catch of black bass at the ninth annual event. Now the old mark, just one ounce short of 60 pounds, is held by Ricky Clun, and he's out to break his own record this year. But Ricky's going to have plenty of other champions on the lake with him each reaching for the same prize and shooting for the same record. Among them is Bobby Murray, last year's classic winner and a superb fisherman. Then there's Roland Martin, Bass all-time money winner. Don't forget Bill Dance, two-time Bass Angler of the Year. Hank Parker's here, a Clover South Carolina boy with a nickname of Jet Ben. There's Tommy Martin, 1974 classic winter, and David Glebe, inventor of the flippin' fishing method. Paul Shambly's here, fishing his sixth consecutive classic. Gary Klein, making his first outing on the Bass Tournament Trail. Larry Nixon, winner of the 1978 Bass Chap Tournament. In all, there's 25 veterans of the classic trail and just enough new blood to make the competition anybody's tournament. Maybe the experts will be right. Maybe a new record will be set. Practice day at the Bassmasters Classic is important, like a NASCAR driver testing the high banks at Daytona or a PGA golfer measuring the traps at Augusta. A bass angler must get the feel of Texoma. But one full day of practice has done little but raise a lot of doubts. They were hitting the bait kind of sharp. We didn't do any good, really. Caught one keeper. We didn't, we didn't catch a lot, though. Really, I was kind of disappointed. 94,000 acres, but uh, we didn't catch many fish. Tomorrow I'm going to change everything I did today, and maybe I'll come up with a few fish. I didn't do too well. It was pretty tough for me. I caught three or four fish all day. Hard. Real it's evident from the beginning that these fishermen may be in for the challenge of their professional lives. A practice round is more than just testing waters. It's a time for studying patterns, sharpening techniques, 
and checking out equipment. Equipment, all important to the bass fishermen. And that which is used at the Classic is designed especially for the toughest competition of them all. For the fishermen, it's vital that the very best equipment be available and in perfect working order. Each contestant starts dead even. All 25 are provided with a fully equipped Bass Masters Classic boat. The boat designed and engineered and built to meet the test that they will give it. This boat isn't just another bass rig. No, sir. It's specially designed for this challenging event. Each rig is equipped with a 115 horsepower outboard, an electric trolling motor, three depth sounders, and numerous other marine tested and angler proven pieces of gear. This is the best rig and gear money can buy. Make no mistake about that. And now it's up to the anglers to provide the skill and expertise. With the preliminaries finished and practice rounds wrapped up, uh, wait, hey, wait a minute, I, I see it now. Hey, it's Ray Scott, ladies and gentlemen. I've never seen Ray dressed up like this before. He's making his entrance as the Sheik of Bass Mastery. Look at him, he's gone nuts. Is he throwing money around? I think it, it must be money. What's he throwing around over there? Hey, somebody's got one. It's applications for bass memberships. Now that Ray's got our attention, let's see what else he has in mind for this evening. It's all part of the plan to break the mounting tension and give everybody fishermen, officials, wives, and invited guests some well-needed relief from the worries of the coming battle of champions. But tomorrow, you can bet the adrenaline will start running at the same time the boats do. The day and the time have finally arrived. The first day of the 1979 Classic. Wednesday. Like an early morning invasion, the boat slipped quietly into the water. Few words are needed. Fewer are spoken. And what they need now, above anything else, is concentration, determination, good judgment, and as any one of them would quickly agree, just a share of good luck. Bass fishing tournaments can be compared to many other sporting events. Contestants must qualify, there are time limits, there are boundaries, officials make and enforce rules, prize money is the winner's reward. There are striking differences too. Bass fishermen don't hit, they don't catch, they don't throw a ball, they don't square off against their opponents in contest of speed or strength or endurance. Their adversaries are not human and the field of play is not really visible. The only size that counts in this sport is the size of that bass. Inch for inch and pound for pound, the game is fish that swims. But the Classic has one characteristic which sets it apart from all other sporting events. Bass tournaments. Each contestant here on Texoma has exclusive coverage by the news media because in each of the two-man fishing rigs, one of the men is not a professional fisherman, but rather a professional sports writer. That's right, as close to the action as any newsman can get. Actually, a part of the action, studying every move, learning how a tournament can be won or lost. In all, 75 members of the press are covering this championship, and their reports will be sent to millions of bass fishing followers throughout the world. 
these writers get a first-hand look at the skills, the heartbreaks, the victories, the moods, and the tensions of all these professionals. Many wives would dearly love to be over-impressed, sure they would, to the tune of $25,000. But getting a shot at that prize means a full day of fishing, every day of the three-session tournament. It's more than a race against the fish. It's more than a race against other fishermen. It's also a race against the clock to get in all the fishing possible during the time limits. The first day's work, wives and hundreds of spectators gather at the weigh-in area, and they're all awaiting the results of this, the first day's catch. This is the beginning of the true test here. It's the climax of the opening round, and the winner for the day will prove his victory with the weight of his fish on the scales. Here they come, and you can feel the excitement. Bobby Murray, last year's winner. He starts the tournament with two fish. Not bad, Bobby. His catch totals six pounds, five ounces. Forrest Woods starting his comeback with four fish. While most of these contestants have been fishing, Forrest has been building their boats. Not a bad day's work for Forrest. A total of nine pounds, two ounces. And again, not bad for a guy who's been off the tour so long. Oh, oh Here's Roland Martin. Hey, look what he's pulling out of that live well. It looks like he had a good day. That's three good fish for Roland. Three bass, three lines, Roland Martin. Eight pounds, ten ounces for Roland Martin. The competition, as you can see here, is close at the top. Ricky Clunn only showed up with two fish. But don't feel too sorry for Ricky. He's an expert. He's a veteran. He's been there before. And if he has two fish, he's in the competition. Eight pounds, ten ounces. I told you Ricky would be competitive. Is that a bass or a whale? That one hit the scales at six pounds, nine ounces. And it keeps Ricky Klum up there with the leaders. Gary Klein's had a full day. And only his first year fishing the tournament, too. He's having a great rookie year. He was less than two pounds off the angler of the year race, won by Roland Martin. All right, Gary. His catch weighs in at 10 pounds, 11 ounces. The word is now that Hank Parker may have the only limit of the day. Parker is the seventh leading money winner in 1979 on the strength of Lunker catches in the first three invitational tournaments of the year. Yes, six minutes, alive. Come on up here, folks. Al says, oh. Six alive. Remember now, whatever we tell you, add a total of 12 ounces bonus for the big, for the live fish. And the weight, and the new leader, 15, 14. 15 pounds, 15 ounces. No limit for Parker, not here, but right now he's in a league all by himself, including him, only nine men caught over one bass. And remember, nine struck out. No one can argue with that today. Texoma stumped even the best of them. A little bit of whole lot. In keeping with the Bass Association's first class tension breaking entertainment, Mel Tillis moves into the spotlight. Well, Melvin, because I have stuttered all my life, about 18, 19, 22 years of it professionally, and I'm beginning to make a hell of a living out of it. While telling a story is a challenge to the country music star, you put a guitar in his hand and let him sing his song, and he can do it without a blemish. The boss chose me. I'd been sort of restless. Guess he thought it might happen. I got away from the wife and family.
have to tell you, I just saw all the cowboy movies and everything. Not a whole lot of cactus trees and stagecoaches running around. And all the tall tales about all the big fish. Now, nobody at this level of professionalism waits on luck to come to them. If you wait on luck to come to you in this business, you're coming up dry. If there is such a thing as luck, they go out after it, and they take their skills along with it just to make certain that they can find it. But how can anybody say that he'll be in the right spot at just the right time? You know, a lot of people seem to think that uh it takes a great deal of skill, I think, to win the classic, but it's always been my opinion that, uh, that luck probably plays the biggest factor here than any other tournaments that we fish, mainly because uh, we only have one day to practice. In the lake of 50 to 60,000 acres, probably like we have here, it be, it's just impossible to cover uh, all the variables. I think it's a matter of... Uh, of a bunch of experience even to get to the classic. And we have 25 people here that's qualified to win it. So a man's got to get a little lucky to get into the, the, the right number of fish to win this thing. Well, as you can tell, that's what sets these professionals apart from the riverbank worm baptizers. They've made technical, scientific studies of the ways to catch bass and many of them have invented new spinners and other attractive baits. So don't count on chance. They count on their own skill and knowledge to outwit the elusive clever bass that they're after. Yes, it's all skill, with just a little bit of luck here and there. But luck, as we all know, has two faces, good and bad. That's a pretty nice fish here. I just lost another one, caught him, and he fell right down here on the seat, and before I could grab him, just jumped right overboard. It's a real nice fish, about the same size as this one. I'm afraid it's gonna cost me a lot of money, that little fish. I ain't gonna let this one get overboard, I can tell you that. Well, the day's time for fishing is run out. Now it's time to add up the score once again. Here's Basil Bacon. He's coming into the weigh-in area, and he's bringing five fish with him. Basil is making up for yesterday. He was one of the nine that got skunked. 13 pounds, four ounces. That puts Basil Bacon right back in the race again. Thank you, Carl. I tell you, this old boy from Florida, this is his second full year on the circuit. He made it last four years. And the leader is back to his old tricks again today. Hank Parker comes in with five fish, and it looks like he's going to add even more to that lead. 11 pounds, 15 ounces for Hank. Woo. Gary Klein, he's bringing in three bass. Trying to stay in the competition, too. At 10 pounds, 11 ounces yesterday. Five so pounds, 13 ounces. Not a bad day for a rookie. And it's enough to give him some momentum going into the final day's competition. Six times out of nine years, he was angry with you. He thinks he's everybody out of our 300,000 members. He's one of more nice performers than any man in history. Roland Martin's got three fish, and they're good-looking bass, too. This is definitely going to help Roland's total. Eight pounds, four ounces of Roland Martin. Let's give a nice Here's David Gleavy. He's bringing in only one fish today, but look at the size of it. Well, with a fish that size, only one should be enough to keep him in the top ten in this tournament. We've only got one day of competition left. Let's check the total board right now. Parker's lead over his nearest rival, Roland Martin, is over 11 pounds. Gary Klein, the brilliant young Californian, is a close third, and the ever-present Klun is always within striking distance. The question was, there are some guys that traditionally do better on the last day. I'm not worried about that. Well, yes, I'm worried about it, but... I really believe, I mean, it's hard to say. Now, while Hank Parker talks about leading the tournament, 
75 writers and reporters are sending his words on their way to print in newspapers, magazines, and specialized journals all over the country. I'm hoping you might just share a little bit of that. I'm not going to know specifically what you do, but can you just give us a little bit of a, just something just kind of like that, better answer that, like something just kind of fans about it. That being specific. Be happy. Well, it'd be hard, too. I mean, it's an area, and you either tell it like it is or you don't say it like it. I mean, there's nothing you can just say, well, it's kind of like this or kind of like that. You either say what it is or you don't. Can you say what it ain't? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely not fishing rock plugs with a hula <laughs> If Lake Texoma will give up its secrets today, the best bass fishermen in the world will quickly discover those secrets. The combined fishing knowledge of the classic represents the combined knowledge of thousands, no, let's make that millions of anglers worldwide. Little by little, as the day wears on, a pattern now seems to emerge. All over Texoma, the pros are drifting along heavy weed beds and stick-ups, underhanding their casts like they may have done with their cane poles when they were kids. The flipping method. Hank Parker didn't invent it, no, not by a long shot but he's had plenty of practice on Lake Wiley near his hometown of Clover, South Carolina. How many other bass pros will use the flipping method today? And will any of them be lucky enough to come up with that hot hole? People are here, thousands of them. The officials are here. The scales are ready. This is the day that the champion gets his crown, or I guess we should say gets his check. I tell you what, now remember folks, there's $50,000 involved, and if you're in the top 10, you'll at least get $1,000 cash. Now, this is gonna... David Wharton brings in his final catch, four fish. Nine pounds, seven ounces, folks, let's give him a great hand, David. That means he has gone from skunked on the first day to the top dozen at the finish. But will it be good enough to win? I don't think so. Ricky Green produces three fish, but they're big ones. He's almost as short of a good finish. That'll put Ricky up there. Tommy Martin had a super day, pulling in six fish, the most since the first day when Parker got that many. This is a good, good bunch of bass. I mean, we've got a sick bass, five alive, and the weight, four, 14, four. 
That's a big number at the finish. But Tommy was skunked on the first day, remember that? And that will cost him now. Bill Dance finally found the secret to Lake Texoma, bringing in three good booking bats. Ricky Klun, always a threat. He arrives with his final day's total of three fish. That's not enough to make him a serious contender this time. Gary Klein has four fish, but wait a minute, they're small. Too small for this competition, Gary. Here's Basil Bacon, and he's got a sack full of fish. This may cause serious trouble for Hank Parker. And the word is, at least we understand it, that Parker may have only caught one fish today. If that's true, this could be a photo finish. 13 pounds, 8 ounces. All right. Now, that is a great catch, but it's just not enough to catch the leader. Wu Daves is skunked again? That's three days for a total of no fish, no pounds, no ounces. It can happen to the best of them. Roland Martin drops out with only one fish. Forrest Woods also only one fish. And Bobby Murray had zip for the day. Now, here comes Hank Parker for his moment of truth. Everybody knows the results but Hank. But when the crowd gathers around his car and the cheers go up and the photographers start clicking, well, Hank Parker knows that it's all over but the check cashing. The ninth annual Bassmasters Classic is almost history. And surprisingly, almost unbelievably, Hank Parker could have stayed in bed this morning and still would have won the tournament. But Parker isn't the only winner here. Out of 138 largemouth bass caught, 136 were released alive. The Bass Angler Sportsman Society Don't Kill Your Catch policy is alive and well and still gaining ground. Thanks to an organized effort and the help of outstanding professional and amateur members of Bass as well as the consistent support of outdoor writers and editors here today. It's all over. The Lake Texoma experts were wrong this time. There were no record catches, but one man, at least one man, isn't complaining.